Don in London, hello. It's June 22nd, my daily video all about recovery from addiction to substances and behaviour. My substances, well, pretty much one. Alcohol, addicted to alcohol, an alcoholic, now in recovery, but also addicted to the behaviour which goes with it, which was to be with the right people, in the right place, doing the right thing, having the right things and generally trying to fit in, trying to be included, learning how to love, be loved and useful. But, and there's a big but in this, with alcohol changing my perceptions on a daily basis, I guess my outlook was quite skewed to looking for the good in life and suppre suppressing the bad in life. But that's no way to live. I'm not living reality when I'm like that. So one day at a time, these days, I prefer to be sober and find ways to keep sober and live life with freedom to choose. Freedom always to choose what I can do. So what's helped me? Family, friends, community, medical people, all kept me alive long enough and still do, helping me with my perspective on life. And a fellowship, and that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And if it hadn't been alcohol, it might have been something else, drugs. So I could have gone to Narcotics Anonymous. Or if it was food, there is Overeaters Anonymous and all sorts of different fellowships out there with 12 principles in a toolkit to live. And principles don't stop us from being real people, living real life and finding out who we are on a daily basis. So each day I find out a little bit more about what I do like, what is good for me, and who I am, just for today. So no longer looking to be at the destination quickly, more interested in the journey of life, and how to live it without a drink in my hand, and with a better perception of what's going on. So my videos include the daily reflections from other years, plus a reading from the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, an AA book, all about step six, which is something I focus on in June, as does some of the literature of the Fellowship of AA in the Daily Reflections. It's all about step six, which is about asking to have our defects of character removed. But it's contingent on the day I ask. So, like any other person, when the pressure's on, I can be forgetful about what is good for me. And sometimes I need to stop and remind myself, what can I do and what can I not do today? So some of my thoughts for today are these. Step six, defects of character, is living to extremes with unhelpful attitudes and behaviour which do not fit my real life situation. So in other words, I can have unhelpful attitudes, it's all about me, it's one of them, and behaviour, which is behaving as if I'm the only person on the planet who counts. And that doesn't fit my real life situation because I am interdependent with the rest of society. I play my part as best I can or share as I best can to make and help life work. So step six, defects of character. And then step seven, shortcomings, a flawed outlook and perception. I may not be equal to deal with my real life situation. So have I got enough in me? to actually see the reality of now and to be able to cope and deal with it. So step six can be stuck with fear, a brave face and relying on a very brittle, brittle ego which can get punctured very easily and expose me as not feeling good enough. And step seven, developing courage, faith and confidence to, do, to deal with real life today. So life is a bit like sixes and sevens. So the next statement really, contingent on the day I ask for help, I can have a st step six day or a step seven day or a bit of both. I can be at sixes and sevens, which is very apt because there is a saying, to be at, at sixes and sevens is an English phrase, an idiom common in the United Kingdom. Kingdom, It is used to describe a state of confusion or disarray. And I know in my drinking days, I was full of bluster sometimes because when people ask me to do things in my work and career can you do this? I would say yes and then find out how to do it and I was mostly okay and successful doing that but it meant 
often I get, got to do things which probably I would have preferred not to be doing. So we get diverted in all different directions if we're not solid in having the confidence to say yes to some things and no to others. And as Gandhi said, an emphatic no is better than a half-hearted yes. And that takes a while to sink in. It's okay to say no. An emphatic no, I don't feel like it, is better than a half-hearted yes, which is going along with the status quo or what other people think life ought to be. Or maybe think what my life ought to be. So I've learned, it's taken a long time, I can say no. And from other years, gift of living, long enough to find a path where life happens in the moment. And this is me, I've lived long enough to find out there is life in the moment of now, rather than thinking about the next, next thing I need to do, or will they find me out for what I've made a mis where I've made mistakes. It may seem a strange notion to be able to feel reality as it happens, and that's where my feelings fit reality and what's going on, so I'm not deluded. To feel fear, the need to cover up and then let go, and be able to feel vulnerable, find faith in the next right action. I need to live life rather than think it. So if I'm spending a lot of time thinking about how it, I should react and respond, I'm probably wasting time. I need to know how I feel first. How am I feeling about this? Is it something I may be doing or not doing? Can I continue long enough to find out whether it's worth doing? And that's what took a long time for me with being sober. It took a long time to get sober. And I'm glad I did. Yeah, today I am free. What would it be? Yes, today I am free. Or the war in my head, the daily battle to face the world is different. Freedom to learn, to start over at any time. To say to myself, by God, you know, some things I can't change. It's a learning experience. Move on. Don't, don't look for blame or why it went wrong. But look to build on what can be done. It's done. Accept and learn. Free to let go, forgive and share my life. And that's a lot. Letting go and letting people in. Freedom to let go and share my life. Courage to be wrong. Own up to being human and needing help in the moment. And everything's contingent on asking for help. So we are interdependent people. You know, we can't live without the others, whoever they are. It could be family, friends, work, you name it, social, community, society. How am I feeling? A good question I ask myself each morning, and I do. Why? Well, with clinical depression as the backdrop, and I need to look at it for me and my feelings and attitudes and behaviour. So, um, so many elements to consider as I wake up each day. Oh yes, and type 1 diabetes on top. Uh, another gift in recovery from a virus. The rush to work, the rush to be doing the right thing, the desire to be able to be fit, in, in, to be able to fit into life today. I don't know if it's about fitting in, or maybe it is, but seeing where I fit and how I feel about it. If you heard that noise, it's the empties from the uh, by Bendham restaurant, very famous in London, where people eat and drink and get merry. I need pause, ask myself, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? Ask myself, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? On my own, I can resolve the simple day-to-day -day tasks which involve me. And when it gets complicated by other people, I need to ask, how are you feeling, and why, so we can find common ground in our activities today. So it's not just about me and how I feel. I need to ask you how you're feeling about things. When I say how am I feeling and ask myself that question, it's about assertive around my feelings and an understanding of what is possible and not possible. And when we ask together how are we feeling and why, it's about empathy. So we need to have enough assertiveness to find empathy with our friends, family, you name it, wherever we are, to have a little bit of empathy or a lot of empathy depending on our life situation and what is important in that moment. So that's me for today and more follows. Uh, the daily reflections and other years and st a reading of step six from the 12 traditions and 12 steps of AA. 
Yes, more later. Don in London. Hello. My daily video all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Today is June 22nd and I share experience, strength and hope of how to be in recovery, taking account of the daily reflections, a, an AA book, one page a day, all about recovery and suggesting that it is difficult as life is difficult. So for today it says this, today I'm free. This brought me to the good, healthy realisation that there were plenty of situations left in the world over which I had no personal power. That if I was so ready to admit that to be the that, that ready to admit that to be the case with alcohol, so I must make the same admission with respect to much else. I would have to be still and know that he, not I, was God. Or in other words, I'm just a normal, ordinary human being in recovery, one day at a time and powerless over people, places and things is okay and around that I have choices to be included in certain parts of what's going on or not, I can choose. I am learning to practice acceptance in all circumstances of my life so that I may enjoy peace of mind. At one time life was a constant battle because I felt I had to go through each day fighting myself and everyone else. Eventually this became a losing battle I ended up getting drunk and crying over my misery. When I began to let go and let God take over my life, I began to have peace of mind. And when I say let God, it's letting the truth, let there be love and let there be wisdom from others. Today I'm free. I do not have to fight anybody or anything anymore. So in other words, when people say go with the flow, it's not about controlling what is there. It's about making choices in tandem with others and saying what is best to good conscience and what helps me when I get angry or fearful or happy and joyful keeps me just level enough so I don't go to extremes all the time is the serenity prayer to God or good conscience. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today. Don in London, hello, it's June 22nd, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. And the reason why I'm smiling at the moment is it's been a, a good weekend actually. Not too much rain and quite a lot of sunshine. and life is okay, life seems or feels to be in balance just for today and my video is all about addiction to substance and behaviour I'm in recovery from addiction to alcohol so I'm recovering a day at a time and recovered for quite a while so I guess we don't graduate when we come into uh, recovery we just make sure and hope for a good sober day so if it wasn't alcohol, there'd be other substances or behaviour which would have got me. I could cross addict. And I noticed this last night because I had uh, a couple of sweets. And before I knew where I was, I was munching halfway through a big packet. And that's not good for me because I'm type 1 diabetic. And everybody says that sugar is a no-no. But actually, if you're type 1 diabetic or type 2 diabetic, sugar is not actually a problem. It's how much food we are putting into ourselves and the variety of food and the variety of medications we have to enable us to turn food into energy and it can be uh, injections of insulin and I take two different types uh, one which uh, makes sure that there is glucagon in the liver that's the background in insulin which I take on a 24-hour basis and then ra rapid insulin which I take uh, as I have meals or have snacks so for each unit of uh, food going into me in terms of carbohydrate I need then ha have a unit of insulin of the right type, that's the fast acting one, to combat and turn it into energy. The trouble is if I don't then burn off the energy of course what happens is I'll get fat and I've gone through fat and famine in recovery as well as being type 1 diabetic and it's often due to stress or clinical depression or just not being able to cope with life 
And uh, one of the things which I was reminded of last week is it's very difficult to change behavior, to change our attitudes. And I'm glad, and it's a privilege for me to be in a fellowship which helps me do this on a one-day basis. And that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous. So AA provides me with a safe place to find out who I am on a daily basis, because I forget. And I don't know sometimes, and I think I'm just pushing a big hard rock up a hill, which just flattens me and sends me back down to the bottom. Anyway, fellowship is important and integral. <coughs> so it means I can then be part of family, community, society, and make a contribution. And I felt good to be in that, that five-day course last week. It's going to elongate my life if I can keep to the regime. And uh, what helps me do that, certainly, is fellowship and the one-day program, living in the day, our spiritual connection to now, all those things, so important. And yet we take it for granted sometimes. So I take less for granted and find gratitude that I'm still breathing, living. And I've got heartburn this morning, and I don't know, it could have been I overate and overcompensated. Anyway, we'll see how my blood sugars go. They're okay at the moment. So, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, that's what I focus on mainly in these videos, apart from my life. And uh, there is a preamble shared at the beginning of every meeting. Oh, and also you might have noticed some cartoon versions of my diaries from years gone by. I've got a few hundred thousand words out there. I'm not sure how to express them. And uh, I'm experimenting, so don't, don't th think for a moment that if I'm going to just do cartoons in future. Um, I'm going to do this and probably split the cartoons onto another YouTube site. So, AA, preamble, said at every meeting, it goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any set denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And at the moment, <coughs> excuse me for coughing, um, I feel all right today, and it's, be, it's unusual and it's good, and I'm glad about it. So, the Fellowship of AA, I cannot speak for it, it's anonymous, it's a society of unique, authentic people who can speak for themselves in their own world. And uh, the reason why I speak about my recovery is that it maybe it helps people get an idea of what AA may be able to do for them. The trouble is it won't fix a thing. It just gives us the knowledge and the wisdom in how to change our attitude and behavior on a daily basis. So AA does not fix people. You know, it's a program of 12 steps. And those 12 steps are about being open, honest, and willing to change. And if the change is not part of the agenda, for the personal agenda of somebody who's trying to get into recovery, you might as well not bother going because it won't do anything other than irritate you. But it, that's what he did in the first place for me. And it took me a few years to go back to my second meeting. And uh, by that stage, I was beaten down to, uh, I don't know how many rock bottoms along the way, but there were quite a few. And life-threatening as well, which I can be jovial about now sometimes. But at the time, I, just, I was out of it. And it was a deadly serious moment or two where I was making light of, uh, you know, checking out and expiring. So, what keeps me sober? Not only fellowship meetings of AA, my family, community and society, and I also share the daily reflections here. And for today, June 2nd, 22nd, it says, Today I'm free. Ah, oh, well, relatively. This brought me to the, to the good, healthy realisation that there were plenty of situations left in the world over which I had no personal power that if I was so ready to admit that to, be the, that to be the case with alcohol, so I must make the same admission with respect to much else, I would have to be still and know that he, not I, was God. And you know, often we judge the world and what it's done to us, almost like a, an egocentric, godlike attitude of what is this world doing to me? And the simple answer is not very, no, not very much. It's just where we happen to be. And, you know, nature and providence, the universe, God, all those things are uh, way beyond our comprehension. And I guess, you know, if there's a telephone line into God, it would be constantly engaged. So what's good for me is good conscience and knowing that if I flow with what's going on around me, I have a better chance of making some good choices 
But if I try and control it, I'll get frustrated, angry and depressed. And that's the place where drinking can start again. It goes on to say here, I am learning to practice acceptance in all, in all circumstances of my life so that I may enjoy peace of mind. At one, t at one time, life was a constant battle because I felt I had to go through each day fighting by myself and everyone else. Eventually this became a losing battle. I ended up getting drunk and crying over the misery. When I began to let go of uh, self-will and self-obsession, I guess, uh, and let God take over my life, I began to have a have peace of mind. Today I am free. I've not, I do not have to fight anybody or anything anymore. And the gift of that really is, whether it's God taking over our life or good conscience, and uh, allowing ourselves to be included and keep on learning wisdom, I think we're on to a winner. And uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I haven't been able to get to this one for a while, as Bill, as Bill sees it. And I've got a couple of minutes left. So on page 133, it talks, talks about privileged people. <clears throat> I saw that I'd been living too much alone, too much aloof with, from my fellows, and too deaf to that voice within, the voice of good conscience, hopefully. There's another one in there, which says, go to the pub. Instead of seeing myself as a simple agent bearing the message of experience, I thought of myself as, as a founder of AA. How much better it would have been had I felt gratitude rather than self-satisfaction. Gratitude that I once suffered the pains of alcohol alcoholism. Gratitude that a mir miracle of recovery had been worked upon me from above. Gratitude for the, pri the privilege of serving my fellow alcoholics. And gratitude for those fraternal ties which bound, bound me over and bound me ever closer to them in a comradeship such as few societies of men have, and women have ever known. Truly did a clergyman say to me, your misfortune has become your good fortune. You AAs are a privileged people. And you know what? We are. And most people are privileged because we're alive and we've got, uh, we've got a set of brain cells which make us make sense of our lives today. And if we can understand who we are on a daily basis and what can help us be happy not necessarily in the material sense but in the emotional, spiritual and physical sense we can deal with most of life's problems or just be turning up for life as it is and that's the gift for me so as I say on my videos and it's the serenity prayer to God or good conscience or, your, or the higher power of your choice as a unique authentic person with a view grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference it surely is just for one day Don in London, good morning. It's June the 22nd, 2008, and the time is just after 7 in the morning. Welcome to uh, my video. And it's been an interesting 24 hours. And um, sometimes in recovery from anything, uh, other things come into play. And for me, over the last week or two, I've noticed I've uh, been sliding backwards in, in terms of depression. And that often means I'm pushing too far too quickly. And yesterday I had to sort of call a halt to any sort of social activities and do uh, what I would call a maintenance day, which is simply getting on with me in the moment and doing some very simple things to keep on balance. And then reflect, where am I now? What am I doing? What may I do about it? So it's a bit like, how am I feeling? Why? What can I do? Um, that's a sort of singular approach to what we do when we're trying to sort out ourselves. And if we do it on our own in isolation, we can be quite assertive with ourselves and work out how we're going to cope with matters. Or, if it involves another person, like it does more often these days for me, how are we feeling? Why and what can we do? And uh, I've, I've been in a new, a new relationship now for a month or two, and it's all going very well. And at the same time, it's very interesting. We both need to maintain our own identity and uh, we're very keen to make sure that we don't lose out and stop doing things which are very useful to us and uh, my girlfriend is in recovery too and has been around for quite a while and is keen to make sure that nothing undermines either us or anything else we do mm -hmm. so we know that sobriety comes first and sobriety is keeping away from drink and uh, not getting into an agitated state because we're not sure how to cram everything into each day
and everybody works at 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. And the notion that we can keep on taking more and more on means that we pay less a de less attention to the detail of living. So important is to say, well, if something's coming into our lives and we need to let go of some other things, very gently. And it's not about letting go of people. It's more to do with uh, being more more able to work out how to manage our time better so we have quality time uh, in, in all the endeavours we do and that is so true and I know that I've stretched myself a bit thin over the recent weeks and the reason is obviously new and exciting times and at the same time I need to maintain sobriety so there is a fine balancing act which is never easy to do and can only be done on a daily basis because if we plan for uh, the way of the world to be a certain way is almost certain it won't quite turn out that way but we can actually steer the ship of state or the head of state or the state of the nation into an understanding about what is possible and what is not possible on a daily basis so I continue my videos because it's part of my reflection and meditation each day and uh, sometimes they get watched and sometimes they don't so it's good you know sometimes we just need to find the balance again and look at what we're doing and be considerate and have empathy rather than wondering if things are alright so time can cause us problems because there's just not enough of it and I mentioned last night when we were having dinner you know the, the problem that some people describe as boredom feeling bored with life it is actually an agitated mind needing something to do and uh, that doesn't happen to me these days and hasn't happened to me for quite some time so I don't get bored, I just am interested in what is going on around me. But I know also, speaking to my psychiatrist, that it's inevitable with a person with clinical depression, no matter how much professional help we get and medication of the right sort, minimum quantities, not maximum quantities, that we can go off, off the boil and find that depression comes back to haunt us. And uh, I guess what I've been doing in the last week is being a bit concerned about my, the frayed edges of my life. I'm not that frayed. Anyway, coming on to uh, why I do these videos, which is the daily reflections, and trying to make sense of how to make the day work. Somebody also wrote to me, and I do appreciate they, they wrote in, in absolute honesty about everything they said. And can an atheist pray? or can an agnostic pray to uh, a power of their understanding and actually for me yes the answer is absolutely uh, whether you believe in God or good conscience what works is an exhortation to the truth an exhortation to spiritual as I said yesterday spiritual, the spiritual foundation of living is truth and whatever affords that uh, whatever we get in terms of help from family, community, society professionals Whatever, whatever enables us to make the best use of each day, see it without, without denials, or less denial than we might wish, uh, without less filters, or rather having less filters get in the way of the truth, then I think we're on to a winner. And it's not something that we can be perfect at, it's just something we can work on gradually each day. My scenery in the back is a bit different. I've changed where I've uh, got my webcam, so apologies for the busy background. And uh, this one, Daily Reflections, 20 seconds, it says, Today I'm free. This, this brought me to the good, healthy realisation that there were plenty of situations left in the world over which I had no personal power. That if I was so ready to admit that, that to be the case with alcohol, so I must make the same admission with respect to so much else, I would, have, I would have to be still and know that he, not I, was God and uh, saying, saying powerless over alcohol and life is unmanageable certainly also powerless over people, places and things because if we try and control them life will get very unmanageable and either they become prisoners or we become pris prisoners by trying to control it it goes on to say I am learning to practice acceptance in all circumstances of my life so that I may enjoy peace of mind at one, at one time life was a constant battle because I, I felt I had to go through each day fighting myself and everyone else. Eventually this became a losing battle. I ended, ended up getting drunk and crying over my misery. When I began to let go and let God take over my life, I began to have peace of mind. Today I am free. I do not have to fight anybody or anything anymore. 
and you know whatever we come to understand as uh, God or a higher power or most often for me you know, in practical matters not esoteric I, I say good conscience works because it's the, to the good to the good of good conscience and we always have a voice in our heads which says we want it our way when in fact it's just the, world, the way the world is the way nature is the way providence is so onwards as Bill sees it and it's, uh, I just do these linearly, they're not connected with June or step six. Page 177, One, money before and after. In our drinking time we acted as if, money was, if the money supply were inexhaustible, although between binges we'd sometimes go to the other extreme and become miserly. Without realising it we were just accumulating funds for the next spree. Money was the symbol of pleasure and self-importance. As our drinking became worse, money was only an urgent requirement which could simply supply us with the next drink and the, te and the temporary comfort of oblivion it brought. And he goes on to say, although financial recovery is on the way for many of us, we find we cannot place money first. For us, material well-being always follows spiritual progress. It never precedes it. And I, I guess it really does depend on expectations when it comes to money. And uh, the, the promises that... Um, are made in the AA Big Book is to improve our spiritual, emotional and physical well-being and as a consequence of that there may be financial security in the future but you know there is nothing ever secure except what we learn on a daily basis and what we can do on a daily basis. The rest is down to nature and providence most likely or to powers greater than us like whether the uh, the hospital picks up what it needs to, or we actually do something about those things which ail us. 22nd of June in this book, 24 hours a day, saves. If you have any doubt, just, just ask any of the older members of the AA group, and they will readily tell you that since they turned their lives over to the care of God, or good conscience in my case, as they understand it, many of their problems have been banished into the forgotten yesterdays. When you allow yourself to be upset over one thing, you succeed only in opening the door from the coming of for, from the coming of hundreds of other upsetting things. Am I allowing myself to be upset over little things? And often it is the little things which actually grate deeply on us. And the answer is uh, is to let go of those things which are real no consequence in a lifetime and uh, just get on with doing the right thing. And that is not reacting to life but responding to it and being a part of living the life of recovery so there we go my time is up and uh, maybe more later most likely tomorrow Don in London hello my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life. 
knowing what our feelings are and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June for me is all about step six. So I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly. Right, so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It has been called the sin from which all others arise. Pride is also known as vanity. So pride is the first deadly sin or defect. Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD. An epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the 12 steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character, and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins, and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life, and life as it is today, and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is 
entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilized of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me but when I became willing to clean house that's step four and then as to a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AA's have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that and I would add to that as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't but if we ask on a daily basis at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects when men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives they commit a most unnatural act defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation they seem bent upon self-destruction they work against their, best, their own deepest instinct as they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession and uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience liber liberality and diligence 
to working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. And that's to do with our thinking and and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail We'd, we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we should often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done but well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves. Yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, 
pure and simple that has enabled us, most of us to escape. Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. and. Uh, <clears throat> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction, else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call, it, only we call that retiring. Consider too our talent for pr procrastination, which is really slow in five syllables. Nearly anyone can commit a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. 
We want to settle for only as much perfection as it will as will get us by in life, according, of course, to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission we were powerless over alcohol can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals. But, you know, strict adherence on a daily basis, life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways. So, defects as well as virtues will be around. There are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress. Seen in this light, step six is still difficult but not at all impossible. The only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying. And that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. We are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol, we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? Are we ready? And the only answer is, yes, really. Or, if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry, the answer may be no. So we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no, never, our minds close against the grace of God or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because... You know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms. Acceptance is the key always. Or we get into trouble again. 
and it's being defiant or angry against our situation often that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve so just a reminder the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings the virtues which is all about step seven I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence and I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past I was criticized deeply by someone when they I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect it's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out my defect would be not to say it if you get my drift so these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel okay given my current situation my feelings fit my my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or well, my virtues are without foundation courage faith and confidence over elated I need to, to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyze to death how am I feeling why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now why because I'm giving it I'm giving it set with thought what can I do consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent and the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear, brave facing and ego in my heart 
it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today